Hey, this is Pete with Aqua Effects. Thank you for joining us again for another demonstrational video of the advantages of running a RO booster pump for higher pressures. Um, increased pressure is going to give you better efficiency from a unit. You're going to get higher gallons per day, only up to the gallon per day that your unit's rated for, but you're also going to achieve a higher rejection of TDS, uh, yielding you longer lasting DI or just cleaner water overall. Um, initially, what I want to do is just show you the RO unit. This is our Dolphin. I'm turning on the water supply. We're going to let the canisters fill up slowly with water. Check for any leaks. Unit should be leak free as it is pressure tested from us before we ship it to you. However, things get jostled in shipping sometimes, so we like to start slowly make sure that there's no sort of uh, leaks. Um, I notice that my pressure gauge is starting to register, meaning that my water has made its way to the RO membrane. I'm yielding about 60 PSI on the pressure gauge right now. Um, I am seeing some product water as well as wastewater come out of the line. Uh, of course, with RO, expect about three or four to one times waste uh, that you will see of product. I now see 60 PSI in my gauge here. I have for demonstrational purposes another pressure gauge that's yielding about 65 PSI, a little bit of a pressure drop going between the pre-filters. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to install your booster pump. We're going to shut off the water supply. We're going to take a pair of uh, RO line tube cutters or anything that you have sharp in your kitchen. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to cut the line with a nice flat cut. Uh, flat cut meaning no angles, so that as we take this tube and we go to shove it in the quick connect fitting, we're not going to have any sort of leaking. If you, if you give it an angle of, of about uh, 45 degrees, you're going to have leaks, so, so don't do that. Um, notice the pump has directional flow. It does have arrows on the head. So what I do is I take the incoming water line and I hook it into the inlet of the pump, denoted by the flow of water. I then take the line that is feeding my unit and I... Uh, connect that there. I now can take my high pressure switch, which will be uh, automating the pump, and place it on the product water out of the unit. Again, taking special care to cut the line flat. The pressure switch is unidirectional, so it does not matter which way it faces. You can just plug in the quick connect on either side. And I can now turn back on my water supply. As the water supply is turned on, I'm going to go ahead and take my provided transformer and plug it into a 110 power supply. The pump is now lightly vibrating, not so much that you can really hear it, but if you touch it, you are going to feel a light murmur on it. You'll notice that my pressure gauge is actually up above the 100 PSI range, which is a little bit too much pressure. Uh, I don't want you to run your pressure at home any more than 80 PSI. And we're going to discuss how we can bleed off a little bit of that pressure so we can still utilize the efficiency of having high pressure, but not run it in an area where it's perhaps unsafe for your home. Um, you're going to notice that I do have product water coming out here, and for demonstration purposes, I put a ball valve. You can use a float valve at home, a ball valve, or any sort of external cutoff device. What will happen when you shut this line off? The unit will build pressure for maybe 30 seconds, and my pump is actually already shut off, and then the unit is going to shut itself down. So as the pressure builds, the pump will shut off when this line is deadheaded. The same is true the other way. When I open up the line, my pump turns back on immediately, producing uh, your cleaner water. Um, the pressure of anything over 80 PSI is a problem and we don't want to run it that high. So what we do is I'm going to go ahead and shut off the waste or my feed line into the unit and I'm going to take my membrane flush kit and I'm going to go ahead and install it on, a, on the RO drain line and I'm going to kind of open it a little bit just so that we can bleed off of some of that excess pressure. So, so now my unit is shut off. I have my membrane flush kit. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my waste line from the RO membrane housing. Expect a little bit of water to squirt on you. We're then removing the flow restrictor from the drain line. I disconnect my flush kit between the two T's and insert the flow restrictor there. I then join the tubing back into the quarter inch T. I'm now going to take my existing drain line and I'm going to snip off a little piece to allow the flush kit to be joined into the membrane housing. I feel the, the tubing crunch into the fitting, telling me that it's been seated. I am now pushing in the other end, seated, and I'm now going to take my existing drain line that was and hook it up on the exit of the flush kit. 
I am now going to turn my unit back on again and presume, resume production. I turn on the pressure. I open up this line in order to turn the pump on. Notice I've made a common mistake. I've left my flush kit open. I've left the ball valve on the flush kit open, meaning that all the water is going down the drain. All the pressure is going down the drain. When I start to close this, I'm going to yield some pressure back on my gauge. So I'm now restricting this ball valve on the flush kit until my gauge shows something about 80 PSI. We can be a little bit below 80 PSI, that's okay, but we don't want to exceed 80 PSI as it may be unsafe to run in your home. So I'm now running at 75 PSI, nice and healthy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, again, shut the ball valve off. My pump builds pressure for about 10 seconds, and it's now shut off again. So now you've utilized the booster pump, the RO membrane flush kit, in conjunction with one another so that you can achieve maximum uh, efficiency from the unit from higher pressures. But also another key feature is going to be that when you're done making water for the day, uh, you should go ahead and open up this flush kit 100%. That is going to, again, zero out your pressure, sending all of the water and pressure down the drain line. What that's doing is that is actually rinsing any scale that is accumulated over the membrane surface down the drain. And at this point, when you're done flushing your membrane, you can go ahead and turn off your feed into the unit, uh, make sure to unplug your pump, and then the unit can either be stored until your next time using it, or you can uh, just leave it as is if you have the system automated, you know, with an automatic shutoff. Um, but from there, your pump is automated, your system is good to go, and uh, you'll be making water more efficiently than you were if, say, you had lower pressures, or if you have no membrane flush kit, your membrane might fail, say, a few months sooner than, than it could. We're going to be discussing other videos on uh, carbon rinsing, as well as DI add-on. So we look forward to seeing you turn in for another edition. Thank you.